Hello, I'm Henrique, a Cloud Support Engineer here at the AWS office in Cape Town. Today, I'm going to show you how to activate and deactivate SQL Server Service Broker at the Amazon Relational Database Service for SQL Server instance. Let's get started. Service Broker provides Queen Messages Service for Microsoft SQL Server. This feature is supported at the Amazon RDS for SQL Server. When you enable Service Broker, Amazon RDS requests a database lock. Before enabling Service Broker, close all open connections to the database. Now let's identify if the instance is running as a single availability zone or as a multi-AZ mirroring. Let's look at the output of the script. Run the first script to check if Service Broker is activated. On this scenario, we have confirmed that instance is running as single AZ. We are going to simulate two scenarios. We have one database with service broker already activated and one database with service broker deactivated. If service broker is activated, then no further action is required. If it's deactivated, then run this script. Check again if Service Broker is activated. To deactivate Service Broker, run this script. If you see multi AZ mirroring, then check if Service Broker is activated. If Service Broker is activated, then no further action is required. If it's deactivated, then run this script. In the mirroring environment, if it's deactivated, we must first break mirroring and then quickly run the script to activate Service Broker. You can do so by running this script. Check if Service Broker is activated. To deactivate Service Broker for multi-Z environment, you must run this script. You don't need to worry about setting multi AZ mirroring up again. Amazon RDS automatically does this for you. If you are running in a multi AZ always on environment, then you must first move to a single AZ environment, then reproduce the step to activate Service Broker for a single AZ environment, and move the instance back to a multi AZ environment. Remember that activating multi AZ can affect performance, so it's a best practice to do so during a low workload period. And now you know how to activate and deactivate Service Broker at the Amazon RDS for SQL Server instance. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computer from all of us here at AWS. <laughs> <laughs>